Tech stocks took a beating this year, and some of the world's most valuable companies have seen their stock prices drop dramatically. Should investors take advantage of the deep discounts or wait for more bloodletting? Joining me now, Satori Fund founder Dan Niles. Uh, Dan, thanks for coming on the show again, and congrats. You are actually up for the year on what's been a pretty ugly year for tech investors. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, I mean, I think the key has been we came into this year thinking the market would be down at least 20%. We revised that in May to down at least 30 to 50 from peak to trough at some point in 2023. And we've tried to keep that in mind, but also the fact that you get these short covering rallies, and we've seen seven rallies in the S&P this year that have averaged 9%. You're clearly not up 63% for the year. So I think you have to keep the long term and the short term in mind as you navigate this market. So being nimble is really important. I want to get deeper into tech, but first let's pull back the lens and I want to hear your view on the broader market. You know, for all of the many variables that determine market action, when stock prices go up, one of the two things has to happen. Either investors decide that a company's earnings are going to be higher than expected or they pay a higher valuation on those earnings. But unfortunately, the same dynamic plays out in reverse, and that's what you see happening in 2023. Absolutely. So the two mantras I've stuck with all year have been don't fight the Fed, which that impacts multiples, and don't fight the fundamentals in the sense that earnings are going to go down. So if you break that into two pieces, over the last 70 years when CPI, a measure of inflation, has been above 3%, the trailing PE for the market is 15 times. The second thing is during a recession, earnings typically go down about 20% from their peak levels. They peaked out about 250 on the S&P back in July. I think they'll go to about 200. So you take 200 times a 15 multiple, you get to about 3,000 on the S&P. And that's our kind of our single point target as we look at where we think the market bottoms next year. And I think Q1 earnings guidance when companies give that and for the full year 23 is just gonna be absolutely ugly. And I think Q1 is going to be pretty rough for the market. And that's about a 25% drop from where we are now. Uh, I do want to ask you about tech. And it, it's funny, uh, companies that a lot of people think of as technology companies are really just getting all their revenue from advertising. And we are definitely in an advertising recession. Can you speak to that? No, absolutely. And, and you bring up a really good point where if you look at online advertising back in the last recession, back in 08, 09, that was about 12% of the total ad market. Now, online advertising is about two thirds of the total ad market. So a company like Google, who's obviously revenues are up 10X since then, they're not gonna escape if you go into an advertising recession. And in addition to that, you've got both Walt Disney and Netflix launching ad supported tiers in the fourth quarter, They'll be ramping those so you'll have a full quarter of impact in March. And I think you're going to really start to see it hit people like Google as you get into 2023 and other people that count on online advertising because there's not many brands in the world better than Disney. So if you want to advertise, that's a good place to go. And obviously Netflix has an incredibly large audience at over 200 million viewers. So that's going to come out of somebody's hide. And that's something you need to remember. Uh, another area that has been wonderful f up until maybe this year was cloud services. I think the market thought that the demand for cloud services would never go down, but you think that that might actually shrink a bit? Oh, I think you're going to absolutely have a huge problem next year on enterprise demand. And the way to think about it is when we ran into COVID, every business had to get online and every consumer, you know, you had to learn from home, work from home. And so that led to a huge surge in spending on software products that let you do all that or hardware products that let you do all that. Then you fast forward three years. And so what are we all doing? You know, I've gone to movies, I've gone to restaurants, I'm going on vacation, et cetera, which means you're not using these products and companies, especially high tech companies are laying off people. So when you see guidance for 2023, when these guys all report their fourth quarters, they're going to be working to account, well, I don't need to support as many employees, so I need less cloud services or things that count on consumption. And so I think you're going to see big guide downs relative to expectations for 2023. And those are the high multiple types of companies in software and names like an Amazon or a Google or a Microsoft Azure. Those are names that we think are going to have pretty rough beginnings of the year as people have to reset what their expectations are for growth. 
Uh, I believe you're actually short uh, Google and even Amazon, which is down almost cut in half. But real quick before we go, let's give the viewers something to look at. Any opportunities in this market? Where do you put long money? Sure. I mean, what we've been saying all year is if you're long something, you need to be short something as a hedge. So if you think about the names that we don't like, some of the areas that we think are interesting, healthcare, right? Simple investment thesis. Nobody wants to die. <laughs> so I think during recessions then, and especially given a lot of us, including myself, didn't go to the doctor's office as often as I probably should have during COVID, you know, that's going to continue to be spent on even if you go into a recession. I think commodities as well, so things like uranium, copper, silicon carbide for electric vehicles, those are things that on the margin, because people aren't investing in them, I think prices will stay better than what you think, um, even going into a recession. And then emerging markets, I mean, if you think about it, the U.S. is tightening, but China's finally getting off of zero COVID. So I think emerging markets is also interesting. And so people want diversified exposure. You can look at the EEM, which is a great way to get to that. You know, we've got some smaller names in Singapore that we're invested in, but, you know, they're a lot more volatile. So EEM is not a bad place to look. But again, matched up against shorts in the United States, because if the S&P goes to 3,000, which we think it will, pretty much everything that I'm talking about will probably get hit, too, to some degree. That's why the shorts are so important. That's how we've made money this year is driven by our shorts, obviously not the longs. Gotcha. And EEM is an ETF that, that holds emerging markets, just to make that clear. Dan Niles, we have to go, but thank you so much for sharing your insights. I appreciate it, Jack.